Let's begin. All right. We will open up the planning board meeting for Tuesday, November 29th, 7 p.m. This meeting is being conducted in a hybrid manner pursuant to the general laws. We are recording it. It will be posted online for everybody to view. Uh, if you are recording it, that is fine. You just need to let us know. Okay. Uh, Seven o'clock town planners reports. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. Okay, since the last meeting, I have a few items to report on. Um, we've dedicated considerable time to coordinating the subdivision uh, acceptance process and communicating as well as that process uh, over to uh, Jason uh, Fiore for the Greens West um, subdivision. Um, I think we've all discussed at least that. Uh, uh, a brief and casual level that it is a, a legal process that needs to be started with a petition to the select board. Um, our component is fairly technical. Not only do we manage uh, the security piece, but also uh, the planning, assuming the select board looks for a recommendation from the planning board um, that relates to uh, the infrastructure um, and, and other construction elements over at the subdivision. Um, so we uh, hopefully will be seeing that uh, in the coming weeks and months. Uh, my recent discussion with Jason indicates that uh, there's a rather heavy lift when it comes to the documentation required uh, for that petition um, from his attorney. Uh, but uh, if everything goes according to at least uh, the trajectory he's aiming for, uh, this will be uh, in the process to be on the annual town meeting warrant. Is it is it um, able to be reduced to sort of a checklist? Yes, I have. I don't recall if I shared that, but I'm happy to do so. I distilled uh, the draft guidance material that was reviewed by town council into a bit of a uh, just mixed with shell spreadsheet, so I could color code it and see who has. The responsibility for moving the football forward at a, at a given time. Um, so I'm happy to share that uh, with the planning board for information purposes. But largely, it's going to be a, a frankly a select board driven uh, process. Yeah, I'm just wondering whether um, because the process typically starts with us, whether that's something we can get into a form that it can be given to, you know, uh, along potentially other documents to to a uh, developer who gets a, you know, a permit for the bill. So then they have from Jump Street for the, the, the process and know what's going on. I think that's a, a great suggestion. I recognize that uh, the reason why uh, Jason and Crestview Construction look to uh, well, this board and, and my office is be because the process does begin uh, on our end. So uh, I think our philosophy is in line that if we have some guidance materials that uh, we can have approved and ready to release, that makes sense uh, for the next subdivision that uh, reaches the acceptance level. And we can sort of wrap that into looking at 315. Yes. Do that, so think... Excellent. Thank you. Okay, let's see. We have received an application for an estate lot uh, over at uh, Concord and Tannery Road. Uh, there's um, Chess Stersaborski has property. Uh, he has a house set back from Concord, uh, and a portion of that um, comes back around to Tannery Road. Uh, so the unique aspect about this application is that the estate lot component will be for the existing house and the conforming lot. Uh, will actually be acreage on in frontage on Tannery Road. Uh, so we'll be seeing that come January. I uh, met today with Ed Lydon. Uh, he lives at 116 Klaus Anderson Road, uh, another estate lot project. Uh, he wants to build a barn. Uh, generally speaking, that's not something that raises much uh, attention or concern so long as they adhere to setbacks. I wanted to make sure that I had a chance to talk with him about the setback requirements specific to estate lots um, and also respecting certain aspects of the design, such as uh, uh, 
emergency vehicle turnaround uh, space that's dedicated at the end of uh, a long driveway. Uh, so Mr. Leiden, uh, I expect is going to be submitting uh, his diagrams and materials uh, for the next meeting so that uh, we can always acknowledge those specific facts and determine if there's any further would be necessary. I've been corresponding with uh, Jim Boyle, who I think we've discussed uh, his self storage projects in the past. Uh, he is the developer of the one over on the north side of Westfield. Um, it's on 10 202 across from uh, the cemetery near uh, Barnes Air Force Base. Um, He's looking at the property just south of uh, O'Reilly's. He applied for a variance um, and obtained a variance for that property regarding, I believe it was, I think it was side setbacks. He was looking for some relief on after that particular property. Uh, it is encumbered by wetlands, so he is likely to have to uh, reach out to the conservation next in his particular process. Um, but he's looking for uh, me, conservation building, DPW, uh, police and fire to uh, essentially convene a bit of a roundtable, at least a middle meeting, uh, so that we can have the opportunity to air any concerns we have based on a concept that, um, that he's put together. Is that zone property? That is industrial is compared to where um, in the Riley's in the church. Walls is north of O'Reilly's, and oh, so that at Walls. I'm sorry. They're going to do this at, at Walls. No, this is the vacant. It, does, it right now looks like an open field. I think uh, from Permanente, we know there was some wetlands there, but essentially it's the land just south of O'Reilly's. Okay. On to yeah, yeah. Yes, it's zoned industrial restricted. No, no, nope, nope. we are. He's got the thing. Um, Not even past the, the zone industrial restrictions, awesome. just yeah. north of the log church. Thank you. That's cool. Okay. And uh, I listened to that appeals board. One thing we want to emphasize, I think, on that is the architectural design. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, because he is open to making things look good. So that's a, and that's it's going to be set back from the road because of the wetlands. He's going to have an office structure, office building, and then the storage ones will be in the back of the property. So that's correct. Cool. Yeah. But you want to look. You know. I'm sorry. I was just saying that you want it to look right when you come to town, unless it looks. I think that's important to be on such a. Heavy if they look corridor. at the log church and Waltz's Waltz property, there's that, 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 that effect. That look. don't look at O'Reilly so much. <laughs> but. Uh, understood. Yeah. Um, and if nothing else, uh, Mr. Boyle has been open to uh, discussion and he does seem uh, involved uh, in, the, in the permitting and design process. Uh, well, let's see who's next. Anatoly uh, Ovdichuk uh, stopped in the other week. He purchased property at 19 Foster Road. Um, there's an existing uh, mobile home at the property. Um, and he, I think, was coming by just for, we'll call it, uh, the sake of uh, putting all the cards on the table. Uh, and he also has submitted an application. I think it was just open last night uh, with, the, with the Board of Appeals for a single family home at that property. His variance is mostly related to wetland resource uh, concerns. Is that between 57 and Western Mass Rendering in that strip? Yes. Uh, if you, it's not too far north of South Long Yard, um, just a few bends, and then over on the west side of the street, a little bit down below the street, there's a, a carport, a sheet metal carport, and um, um, okay. an older mobile home that uh, is at the property. So, uh, the news is that uh, he purchased the property. Um, he's a fairly technical fella, hands on again with the, the permitting design process, a single family home is what he's looking to achieve out there. And uh, while we're talking in great depth about the uh, Board of Appeals, I did meet with uh, Chairman Mastroianni after they opened the hearing for the variances. 
at um, the Greens West common driveway uh, matter. There was some, I'm going to use the term friction uh, or confusion as to why they were being approached at this point in time. Um, and perhaps some discussion about what the planning board could and could not do. Uh, so the, my meeting with Mr. Master was simply to explain um, our process, uh, my consultation with town council in light of the waiver requests that were put before us, what we could act on, what we couldn't. Um, so I provided him with a copy of that correspondence, um, the comments we got back from uh, police and fire re relating the reduced width of the driveway. Uh, they did continue to last night's meeting, um, and somehow the entire day has passed, and I, I don't know the outcome of that uh, discussion, but I'm sure we'll almost soon enough. Yep. All right, uh, that's it for my notes. Okay. 705, public comment. Does anybody have anything for the board tonight that is not on the agenda? Anybody? Okay. 710, 159 Berkshire Avenue, Water Management Permit Continued Public Hearing. I think I see, is Derek on here? I believe so. Let me get to here. We got to Yes, day? sir. Hi, Derek. How are you? Yes, sir. Derek, if you wouldn't mind uh, perhaps giving the, the planning board an update on uh, where we are for the design and review process um, and an overview perhaps of what was uh, produced for today. Right, of course. Um, today I submitted a full comprehensive overview of the stormwater management system itself, the treatment train, uh, stormwater management report, backup documentation, TR-55 forms, uh, HydroCAD output, and a few other things, soil report, soil evaluation, um, full, full package. So there's a lot to review, but um, I think that it's, it's built up to this, you know, based on uh, previous conversations and over the past, you know, the course of the time that we've been working together. So, so this is uh, where we are now. Mr. Chair, can I get yeah, yes, please. Derek, to be uh, fair uh, to you, I suppose to myself as well, I haven't had the opportunity to walk through uh, the submitted materials just yet. Um, did you have an opportunity to put uh, a narrative response uh, into that uh, submittal to the last round of comments? Yes. Yes, I did. Wonderful. I think that'll, that'll help guide uh, the next step, um, which is for us to put this in front of Mr. Brown um, for his review. Okay. All right. So um, what are the odds that Randy's able to get to it before the next meeting? Well, Mr. Brown, a, a dedicated a town employee, he actually reached out today to, to make sure I wasn't expecting uh, him to um, <laughs> provide a response. Um, um, okay, so I don't want to put too much on the plate, but right. when is the meeting after 13th? Third, January 13th. Okay. Um, all right, so why don't we, um, there's nothing we can do until then, so we'll have to get Randy's comments and then we can kind of hopefully start to get this to the final form, uh, before the weather gets nice, so <laughs> they can actually do something. Um, yeah, so um, why don't we continue this on to January? I mean, is that realistic? January 3rd? Oh, oh, yeah. Holidays and everything? Yes. Okay. Yes. All right. Um, so let's uh, 
continue it on to 7 10 p.m. on January 3rd. Do I hear a motion? Marcus Phelps will move. Do I hear a second? Richard Hilsing, a second. Uh, we'll do a roll call vote. Michael Doherty, aye. Marcus Phelps, aye. Richard Hilsing, aye. David Sutton, aye. Dave Spina, aye. Okay. All right, uh, Derek. So that'll be on for 7 10 p.m. on January 3rd. Um, and I'm assuming John or Randy will be in touch about their review of what you submitted. Okay, very good. Thank you. you have a good night. Thanks, Derek. Same to you. All right. 7.20 p.m. Earth Excavation Special Permit Renewal. Um, land off Hudson Drive. Shaker Road Zone IR. Uh, public hearing. So you can notice here. Uh, notice is hereby given in accordance with the provision of Mass General Laws, Chapter 48, Section 11, that the Planning Board will hold a hybrid public hearing on Tuesday, November 29, 2022, at 7 20 p.m. in the land use hearing room, Town Hall, 454 College Highway, South of Mass, and online via Zoom on an application by Shaker Farms, Inc., Fair of Nancy, and Daniel Podowitz for a renewal of the earth excavation special permit for the property located off Hudson Drive. Shaker Road, zone industrial restricted and within the Wellhead Protection District. Property is shown on Accessors Map 25, Parcel 1. The applicant proposes to renew the Earth Exploration Special Permit issued to Shaker Farms, Inc., care of Nancy and Daniel Horowitz, in accordance with the proposed South of Zoning Bylaws, Chapter 185, Sections 9, 22, and 33. Zoom information is provided. A copy of the application plan can be accepted by contact um, planner, John Gotti, I just call their email. Any person interested or wishing to be heard on the application should appear at the time and manner designated Michael Doherty Chairperson Southwick Planning Board. Okay. All right. Um, who's here? It's John. John, are you here for? Uh, I am, in fact, John Tomaszewski with our Levesque Associates. Okay. Um, why don't you just give us the overview and then we can kind of go from there. Sure. Um, as you mentioned, this is a uh, simply a renewal of an earth, earth excavation special permit uh, for the property uh, located uh, north sort of, of Hudson, Hudson Drive. Um, this is original permit was from 2014, I believe, been renewed a handful of times since. Uh, progress continues on uh, excavation of the material out there. Uh, can I share my screen? Is that a possibility? Sure, let me get that over here, John. Let me make sure. I'm sorry. Really All right, go for it. <clears throat> All right, I believe you should be able to see this at this point. You can. So this is a, a general plan of the site. Um, so like I, I mentioned, this has been an ongoing process for a number of years now. It's been handling a, a few phases. At this point, they're well into phase four. Uh, sort of marched uh, north on the plan is, is straight up, uh, sort of marched into the site from south to north. Uh, at this point, uh, basically the extent, of the, the extent of the excavation is complete in, in two dimensions, not quite down to uh, the proposed finished grade elevation that we are anticipating being able to hit. Um, there are a number of monitoring wells out there. It's, it's, it will be dictated based on uh, groundwater, where groundwater is located, and we the, the bottom of the excavation has to remain a minimum of 30 feet above that elevation. Uh, recent readings from earlier this year, um, you know, varies a little bit across the site, but there's generally between five to 10 feet more material that uh, could be excavated out from the site. And uh, again, like, the, like I said, this is just simply a renewal to continue that operation. Um, into the near future, I'm not sure of you know the time frame of when that that work would be complete, but uh, there is still a, a, a certain amount of material that would be uh, able to come out from the site. All right, uh, John uh, Goddard. Yes. Do you have any to add in your review of the materials? Uh, I'll note that. Uh, Kyle Scott, the building inspector, and Randy Brown both provided their verbal uh, acknowledgement they didn't have any concerns with the renewal of this uh, special permit. Um, 
in my review, and I guess knowledge of, of some of the history out there, everyone may recall that some of the early monitoring wells uh, were repeatedly impacted. Um, I suppose just frankly located in inopportune locations. Uh, but as work has progressed, I think, John, it was two or three, and it was earlier this year, I think, uh, in the report, if I recall correctly, they installed um, some additional wells. So the timing of the installation uh, seems um, appropriate, um, given that it was before the summer months, um, in order to ensure that we are still well above that minimum 30-foot uh, separation. Um, in review of the as-built uh, you know, at this scale, it's a little bit uh, hard to interpret, but I'm thinking we're probably working within, I'm gonna call it the, uh, the slope where you wanna pull the material out, but not reflecting the final slope um, along some of those peripheral conditions to, this, to the north and east. Um, a little bit of, uh, we'll call it creep along that southeasterly um, fringe. Granted, the property line. So, if everyone recalls, the there was an agreement between Tilcon and Shaker Farms to allow them to excavate, frankly, up to their property line, which was roughly 100 feet away um, from the properties on the opposite side of Tilcon. There's that finger of um, Tilcon line that extends up along the eastern side. So, a little bit of creep along that area, but uh, aside from that, no comments, no further comments uh, from my desk. All right, so this moves in orderly. So they're done with phase one, two, and three. They're on four right now. Is that right? Yeah, I mean, they've, they've, if you see the, the limit of work uh, line in this area, uh, that's basically, that. it appears they've reached the, the limit as far as they're going to go north. Uh, but the, the, where any more material would come out would be uh, off the bottom. Um, like we mentioned, that 186 seems to be the magic number that we're going to go down to uh, when all is said and done in, uh, in areas where it ranges from 197 down to, say, 191 or 192 in this, you know, throughout the, in the entire area. So there's just, a, you know, like I mentioned, uh, anywhere between five and 10 feet of material off the bottom that could still come out of there. Uh, but, you know, based on these slopes, it, they've certainly reached the limits uh, as far as pushing, you know, north, northeast and west uh, within in the site. So any more material generally would probably come off the bottom. All right. And I'm just because I'm just trying to look at the monitoring well. It seems like they kind of run along a line from southwest to northeast. Is that right? The existing so, ones continue to exist. And the new so one. yeah, there's a there's a number of wells down here. I'm not sure a, a few have been disturbed, as John had mentioned. There, but however, uh, there were two installed earlier this year. Uh, one in this area up in the northeast corner, and so one pretty much centrally located right in here. That are where uh, I'm not 100 certain, I'm pr but those are where we got our two uh, where we got our two most recent groundwater elevations from. That's where from those two monitoring wells that were that were in the uh, the application. Okay. Or the renewal application. So is the only historic one that exists number three? Is that I'm reading this number right? four? It seems like four it says was destroyed in. 1819 excavations. So I, I believe four is still existing. Uh, modern well two is, has been disturbed. Modern well one has been disturbed. And I'd have to see there's one up here that doesn't have a number. Uh, but I think, uh, you know, a lot of materials come out of there. I think I'd have to go check the documentation. I, I don't believe that one is still functioning either. Okay. But John, if you don't mind, Mr. Chair, no, 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 uh, the clarification that I think we just like to have in the um, application materials, uh, numbers three and four 
uh, appear to be reversed versus what you have in the plan. So uh, it says, it does say four was, um, yeah, uh, it no longer exists. Uh, right. Uh, on the plan, it shows it uh, as still uh, a reference point. So if we just clarify that, that'd be helpful. Sure. I, I guess I'm just wondering, right? So I, I, I see one and two, which are sort of down the bottom. I think uh, two is in phase one. One is right there where you have the cursor in phase yeah. two. Those are both gone. Um, yeah. I see one that's marked as four, just to the um, right here, yeah, right there, and then I see one up top in phase four that says historic, and it's not marked as a number. Right. Um, I mean, it just strikes me, and tell me uh, if I'm wrong. This is just as a layperson that you should probably have well sort of throughout the site to kind of get a sense of it throughout it, and. If if the only three are all up in phase four, you seem to be missing the bottom, the the south phases um, as far as measuring uh, down there. But yeah, I think I I think John mentioned I what's labeled in the in the in the application maybe the this one doesn't have a number to it. Uh, this one up in the northeast corner here. But I might be flip flopped because I think this mon what's labeled on the plan is four is still functioning. However, in the narrative, it says the four no longer exists. Um, but we did get a reading on a monitoring well three. But I don't. Uh, you're right. I don't see a label for monitoring well three on the plan. I. It's possible this one might should be four and this one's three. Let me think about this. I mean, it would just it would make sense. Again, tell me if this is not scientifically accurate, but it seems to make sense that you want to spread them out so you kind of get a sense of the, the site. And obviously it depends on the the, the site conditions, but um, you would think you would want it throughout the site. And if you had those two that were just installed, which seems one to the very you know north and one in the middle, and then yeah. have one to the south, that would seem to make sense, cover pretty much the entire site there. Um, but if you had three that were basically in phase four, that doesn't seem to make a ton of sense. Yeah. Um, and, I, and if you're still doing, if they're still doing work down in phase, you know, one, two, three, I would think that we want a monitoring well somewhere in that area to at least get a sense of what's going on down there. Yeah, I'd, I'd have to figure out if this is, like I said, if this this well is still functioning, I mean, we have a top elevation one eighty eight nine. Yeah, I agree. I don't disagree with you. I'm just trying to trying to figure it out on the fly here. Uh, exactly which is the the third well that is still uh, good. Yeah, no, and it, it may not be something that you can pull from what you have in front of you. It yeah, may be something you have to go on site to just get make sure that it's accurate. But um, and it doesn't necessarily, at least in my mind, I can't speak for everybody, but stop granting the permit it's just the condition of the permit that there has to be you know some kind of monitoring well i think to the south down there and so if something needs to be added i think it needs to be added but sure if that's still working then great then you have three that are pretty well spaced apart and give you a good sense of what the site looks like sure understood that makes sense okay. um john goddard was there anything else you wanted to add about this? No, okay. that's it. Uh, any questions from the board? No. 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 Um, all right. Um, Yeah, I think that's it. All right. Um, do I hear a motion to, or actually, I'm sorry, any public comments on um, this application? All right. Do I hear a motion to close the hearing? Marcus felt so moved. Do I hear a second? Richard Nelson, your second. Uh, we'll do a roll call for all like the Doherty aye. Marcus felt aye. Richard Olson, aye. David Sutton, aye. Dave's been aye. Okay. 
Um, <laughs> you you set, circulated a draft opinion. Not for this. Oh no, that's the token. Yes. Okay. So, um, John, what we'll do is um, maybe it, it would probably help us out um, if you could in the next two weeks just just firm that up as far as where that's located. Um, and if something needs to be corrected, submit it. And um, then we can kind of, uh, we can vote on the decision at the next meeting. Okay. Um, you know, or, or, or vote on the application and then uh, with a with a written decision in front of us. Sure. Um, I, you know, like I said, if you, at least in my mind, if you have, that one down south is not existing and that's being measured, then I don't have an issue with, I don't have to put anything into the decision, um, you know, to to um, address that issue. Sure, understood. Okay. All right. Um, thank you very much. Very good. Thank you. Thank you. Seven thirty p.m. Special permit site plan approval, wealth well protection district special permit, earth excavation special permit, and stormwater management permit for additional attic public storage. Inc. at one had some drive continued public hearing. All right, uh, Mr. Tomaszewski, and a letter responding to DPW comments on this application. Uh, However, last week's uh, conservation meeting didn't uh, have a quorum for their hearing. Uh, so that matter was continued, remained open in conservation, and we have received a continuous request letter um, from Ms. Cicchetti at our Okay. Sure. Um, okay. We have the applicant and property owners, additional added public storage, Inc., Mr. Andrew J. Reardon. Our office is hearing requesting that the Selfish Planning Board continue the public hearing for Tuesday, November 29, 2022. We are hereby requesting to be placed on the next planning board meeting. If there are any questions or comments regarding this request, please do not hesitate to contact our office at your earliest convenience. Thank you for your time. All right, do I hear a Wait, wait. Yeah, yeah, you don't need to. Yeah, it'll be Jessica voting on the. We're going to continue it anyway. Don't go far. Don't go far. <laughs> um, yeah, that's what I'm just kind of thinking. Um, this isn't bomb. John, I'm going to put you on the spot. How much time for this Jared? We, uh, I'm sorry, do you wish to continue to December or January? Oh, you're right. Mm -hmm. You're right. All right, so I December, December. Sir, where are we at? Um, nothing so far. All right, so why don't we put it at 710, and then we can play around with stuff until we can. Um, if it needs it at the time. Okay. What table is that? Do I hear a motion to continue? Uh, this public hearing for one Hudson Drive to 710 on December 13th. Marcus Phelps, so move. Richard Singer, second. Do a roll call vote, Mike Authority, aye. Marcus Phelps, aye. Richard Singer, aye. Dave Spina, aye. Jessica Thornton, aye. All right. It's much better. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but we are through the hearings. So you got that going for you. I mean, it's 739. There's money on the table, so be careful when we go. <laughs> Uh, all right, Depot Square uh, discussion for the stormwater bond reduction. Marcus Phelps will step aside. Don't go far. Uh, John T. just popped up, so he, he voted my question. Um, I don't have new material uh, from Lebeck Associates. They were reviewing it, so a few remaining points um, and coordinating with Randy and with right, the property management company. My mind is on them because they want to reduce the bond. So that's right. Uh, it's here as a courtesy, but nothing yep. uh, for us to do at the moment. Okay. <laughs> Marcus, you are welcome to come back. So what's Burger King, huh, Marcus? Right. 
Couldn't even get a small. You could have gone together. <laughs> Routine business. <laughs> uh, Hillside Meadow Lane Estate Lot Special Permit Decisions. All right. So. We kind of came to a standstill at the last meeting. Um, so there's been a bunch of discussions since the last meeting among the butters, the applicants, the various um, our officials trying to figure out a solution here to see if there's an agreement that they can come to to then sort of bring to the board and at least in my mind, um, you know, I have my position that if the board is forced to vote on it, I would vote in a certain way. But if the interested parties came to the board and said, this is our agreement, I don't really have a problem sort of accepting the agreement yeah. and putting it into a decision and, and, yeah. and ratifying. So how do they communicate that us to us? The hearing is closed. So they would just send a letter to Mr. Goddard or we can you as here, yeah. Correct. They can, I mean, we we're still deliberating the decision. And so I think it doesn't become evidence in any way. It's just simply an agreement that they've come to and we can incorporate it. I mean, I'll check with town council and make sure, but I think we can incorporate it into the decision if they have some kind of agreement among themselves. Um and I mean, and but we're gonna have to. They have an agreement incorporated in some way into the state law because right now we're not we don't have a vote to grant it or to not. I mean we don't have we don't have a, a majority one way or the other. So um I think I think their the best way forward would be to get some agreement from them and try to incorporate that into it. Do we have a time frame? Is it 90 days to make a decision or 60 days? Yes. And we Close this. I'm sorry. It was the end, of the October 25th. So we have. So we're 30 days into. That's correct. The 90 days. October 25th. We had 90 days. 90 days. Okay. So. Yeah, to the end of July. Okay, so we yeah. haven't. Well, get the time they need yeah, to get I'm it done. Not, I'm really. I'm not. Um, planning on spending much more than the next two weeks trying to get this to the finish line. I was hopeful that we'd be there today, but we're not. So, um, have they discussed it all? Do you know? Has, have all people discussed it all? Though, oh, we don't know. Yeah, I mean, I can, you know, the framework that was being discussed was basically having a 200 foot border that runs along behind the electricity, the abutters properties that would not be, um, have any other structures built no, on it no. other than the house um but no man's land and would not have animals being housed there mm -hmm. um um you know that's the primary i'm trying to think if there's any other provisions but that's the primary provision of that agreement um the this agreement has come to how to put that Take pen to paper and make that enforceable and whatever else. So that is where we are right now. Hopefully, they can get to a place that is happy and shiny. Mm -hmm. But otherwise, I think we've got to figure out how we're going to deal with this next on the 13th. All right. Mm -hmm. So, good luck. Um, but I'll keep, you know, I can. If we are through the town planner's report or the town planner, you can check in with John and see where things stand, but we'll uh, better keep you updated where we are. Hopefully, we get to a good place. All right. Um, so, we'll keep that on for routine business for the next meeting. Uh, that until condescension. Hang on. Can you know that? I did share it uh, with Mr. Saunders as well earlier today.
just give me a minute to grab that. I'm going to get it nice and fine over here. Oh, so. All right. Oh, do you? Yep. That would be easier. Yeah. So that would definitely be the same. Yeah. I just smoked it out of there. Uh, it just starts with the yeah, good condition. Okay. So we'll go through this. Uh, everybody, did anybody get a chance to look through it beforehand? Generally, go through it. All right. Um, so this is a. Bit, uh, and John sent around the old decision too. So, but the, so this is obviously a bit more um, modernized and updated from 1983. Um, all right. So, amended earth excavation special permit, site plan approval, and wellhead protection district special <laughs> permits. Um, three, four. Yeah, that's currently. Um, okay, so uh, application to amend procedural history. Um, all right, any issues with the procedural history? No, it's just for a place that I wasn't designated. Everybody was present at the last time. Oh, yep. Yeah. Yeah. All right. You were present. I was present, but I heard the thing. All right, so we'll go on to page two of the findings. Um, anybody have anything with uh, section A, one through five? We need to include anything about the solar company leasing the property, or did they actually require this land where the site, where the solar array is going to be? Uh, well, I presume if we're doing it this way, they did not acquire the land. They just have a leasehold or a lease on the property. Yeah, that's correct. Um, so uh, let me just see here. Maybe we should refer to that lease in this decision. I'm sure there's some 
legalese in the lease that controls what they are doing or whatever in the future. Um, you could say under three, the subject property is owned by Tilcon Minerals and lease to whatever. Is there a name of the uh, solar? It's in the procedural history that the application was accompanied and augmented by an overlay reuse plan from energy development partners. That's so we would just say lease to energy development partners. Um, I'm not sure I would get yeah. currently no lease in place. There is an option to lease. So it wouldn't be accurate to say now that a portion of the land is leased, but a portion of the land will be leased. No. Well, but I don't you know, so I don't. Um, right now, this property has a special permit to site a large solar um, array that is issued to, what was it issued to, I'm sorry? Uh, it would be Southwick Solar LLC. Okay. Just, all right. So whatever the applicant was, has a special permit that runs with this property for the solar. This property also has a special permit which runs with it for the earth exploration. Um, I mean, in my mind, they run with the property. I don't care so much about who's leasing, who, because that could always change to some degree. I care about who came in for it, who the applicant was, and that they had authority to apply for it. But, but um, so we have a special permit within a special permit. We have two special have permits two special on the permits. special on the same property. And one incorporates, I guess one incorporates the other. One is sort of larger, but it's the entire property and one is a cutoff of that property. And so it- And this is what we're, is we're amending the original one with this decision. Um, yeah, I think that's, and that's I, mean, I think it's a little bit pro forma as to whether you know yeah. it's needed or not. Whether you can, I don't, I don't know the answer to that. But this was what was this was what the lawyer said we should do. So mm -hmm. this is what you're doing. Yeah. Um, here we are. <laughs> I mean, Marcus, tell me if I'm wrong. I just I think of these as running with the property. I care a little bit about the applicant to the extent that they have authority to do so. But other than that. So we granted a special permit for the solar on someone else's property. Right? With the authority of the property owner. Right. right. And so, now the property owner is asking for that to be allowed. The property owner is asking for their permit that applies to the entire property to just be amended to reflect that this carve out has been made for this other special permit. Good. Why don't we say, can we say that sometime? Well, I think it's said, it's just a question of the name. So I'm just trying to think of how we. Um, I think we can handle it in three. Well, I would do this. <laughs> I would say this. Why don't we put it in four and we can just identify who the special permit was granted, who the applicant was for the special permit that was issued. I think we can get that right. And then sure. we'll put that in four. And that'll identify who the permit holder is for the special for the solar. Is that yeah, work that's for you? good. All right. I'm just gonna put a blank in here and then we can come back to it, John. Let's see if we can grab it. Up while you're cool, we'll um or I mean how we can vote on it without that, and you can add it in. Uh, so let's just put it go ahead and conditional approval for that's what we're right. To um to blank. And a special permit. This is so right? yeah. yeah. All right, so that will put 
the applicant name. Ooh, that special permit was granted to right there. That's how you get to All right, served by Hudson Drive. All right, anything else on um, on uh, the general section A, one through five? Okay, hearing nothing. I am going to move to special permit criteria one through 17. Um, which is going to be also new because that would not have been included. It's just simply this condition uh, um, for the most part. Yeah, the broader, um, there was a, there was a, there were findings, right? Yes. Yeah. But um, they weren't the, they weren't the specified criteria. Right no, not quite as directly related to the bylaw as we prefer to write it to the end. Okay. All right. Anybody have any issues with one through, uh, I guess, three is the last full one on. Here. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right. We'll move down to four through ten. The issues are four through ten. Okay, moving on. 11 through 17. Any issues with 11 through 17? 11. Should that be design of the project site will minimize the visibility of vision degree and elements and protect the neighboring property? Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Pass the test then. Thank you very much. Good of you to put those little things in. I better open up the uh, template to see if I were doing this. <laughs> Mike, I assume the applicant will be responsible if something over years this place falls apart, needs to be dismantled. The applicant will be responsible. There is no, so the. Um, that all part of the that's all part of the more specific solar permit, there is a... Um, There's a clause there. Yeah, I'm trying to think of the word that I'm trying to think of. But you know what? Performance standards. It, it, there's a... Um, uh, not rehabilitation, but there is a there is a provision in that. Okay. Because it's in the bylaw, it's my memory. Yeah, yeah decommissioning? Decommissioning, yeah. yeah. might be the okay. phrase that's used in there. Um, or the word that's used. All right. I know. I know. David Spina, it's correct in the template. I, Is I, it real? I, I, <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's confession time. It's wow. It was purposeful. You tried to trick Spina and it failed. Yes. Well it's done. Really <laughs> done. <laughs> I was tricking myself at the end. Left. <laughs> All right, anything else on one through seven or uh, 10, 11 through 17? Everybody, you all set? You got a chance to read it? Tina doesn't like the grammar on one. I just like the grammar on 15. <laughs> Does this before chapter 185? I don't think it's oh, yeah, this is chapter 185. The general purpose is the intent of chapter 185. Yeah, because it's him. Yeah. Yeah. My law says intent of this chapter. So that this yeah. got carried over. Right. And then, yeah. Yeah. That's what we're doing. yeah. Again, John put that in there just to make sure that you are reading Pay closely. Attention, read carefully. All right. Anything else on 11 through 17? Good. All right, I'm going to jump to the specific finding, unless anybody still is looking at 
11 through 17. No, but you can. <laughs> um, we'll go one through five of the specific filing. Shall I jump in here? You can. Line two, instead of for said use at the end of that line, please, from. We're excluding a portion of the property from the at earth excavation use. Yeah, this uh, <laughs> this first sentence is a wee bit strange in some ways. So the continued use of the property for earth excavation purposes as currently permitted. Actually, I, excluding right, that should not a portion of the property whatever, yep. where the large scale solar or whatever. <laughs> yeah, needs to be helped. Help us arrive. <laughs> I'd say excluding a, excluding the portion of the property east of Hudson Drive, where the large scale photo the, 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 the photovoltaic system use is, you know whatever because we have the two special permits layered there one on top of the other I think that helps to explain it Yeah, I think that's fine the way it is. I think that's clear enough. It's just a tough way to write. It's a tough thing to write. Mm -hmm. um, anything else on one through five? <laughs> All right, six through 15. Mm -hmm. The other thing you kind of keep in mind, I suppose, is that I don't, I mean, this, is, this may very well be the last format of this, right? I mean, we're reaching the end point of it could be one more, but I mean we're reaching that end point of these permits. Mm -hmm. So um, um, this, this is not going to be in play for thirty years, or more than thirty years. It's forty years. Seven, six, thirty years. Um, all right. Fourteen. Yes. The proposed use in no way during construction or thereafter. But we're not proposing any construction. I would say operation. And I don't know about no way. <laughs> That's uh, I don't know. Fourteen. Well, that mark during our record. It's not, I mean, it's an existing use. Is it proposed use? Well, I mean, it's you're you're modifying a permit, so you're talking about both the modification as well as the existing use. I mean, you can spell it out that way. I would just take out during construction or thereafter. It just says the proposal does not adversely affect 
the existing or potential quality because the earth excavation is there. And this is just allowing the solar. It's fine. Well, not part of it. Yeah. Well, not ever. Well, but no, this is the special permit that's going to apply to the earth, earth excavation. Right. This isn't just the solar. This right. is the earth excavation permit mm -hmm. that it's just having a carve out. So you still have to write it for purposes of the earth excavation. Mm -hmm. um, all right. <laughs> I don't think that's right though. I think that it's okay right there the way it is. Okay. I know he's talking about a thing. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you guys are um, way too much time together. Mm -hmm. We'll talk about it, John, later. Thank you. And you see him on a daily basis. <laughs> <laughs> Good argument. <laughs> Um, all right. Any issues with the decision? Uh, but we still. Oh no, we split. It is, huh? Well, we have some cutting and pasting. Oh, no. All right, we just put them down. It is not. No, it's not split. So we have to. <laughs> Can you grab a um? So if we can look at the one, we can grab um just tell me where what it is out there. How about the solar facility? Is it March? Yes. Quite fine. Do you have it right there? I mean, I don't even know. Uh, I can. But you're done to make it blow up. I'm just not seeing it now. Oh, well, I'm seeing out there. That was interesting. That's what I'm looking at. This is a different question. Just give us a minute. I guess we have to separate out the well height protection as a separate vote and decision. So I just two separate votes. Yeah. The votes are on page seven. Well, there's separate decisions in terms of conditions as well. Um, I think my memory serves me to be wrong. Are you sending the other? Oh, okay. That's, that's probably not going to happen. Do you want me to send the other? No. Nope. Nope. That's not a single one I had open because that's when you sent the. Gotcha. I did? You're right. That's I have the old email address, though. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, 
Go ahead. All right, so we did findings. Now we put it on the one. Oh, no, we didn't. We did the terms and conditions in a separate one. We did the decision all in one, and then the terms and conditions were separated out, and we did two different choices. All right. So, I'm going to put that in a minute. That modification to a special kind of approval. And Protection district. Yep. Uh, special. Special primary. Part. Yeah. Okay. All right. So the decision. Everybody okay with that? Mm -hmm. Got a modification of special permit. I plan approval and well protection district permit. Yes, yes. Okay. Terms and conditions. Now, these are going to be the terms and conditions that apply um, generally. And then you get to the terms and conditions that are specific to the wildlife protection. And we can put those on. I assume they're going to be the same thing. Well, we'll just get to it. Okay. Um, terms and conditions. Anybody have anything with one or two? Two reads very strange. Uh, I think the of approval has to come out for sure. The second one, anyway. Right. And I think well, it's uh, sort of a standard <laughs> boilerplate. We usually say conditions of approval of all permits issued by other boards and agencies of the town of Southwick shall be considered something, but it's not considered yeah, of I, approval I under the special intent was considered conditions of approval. All right, well, I got to come back up to one. So Seems like the, we the have a standard boilerplate. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that we use. Yeah, um, hold on a second. Yeah. Let me just, um, so that I can jump ahead on the other thing. Let me just correct. This is the right. Thank yes, thank you for. This is the only one that we were going to ask you about, too. That's all good. <laughs> for sure. You can build one if you want. <laughs> <laughs> What are we building? Yeah. <laughs> well, now they can apparently we start building stuff. Um, all right. So we did away with A. <laughs> yes. A went away. <laughs> Don't know that now. <laughs> I'm happy to to clean it up. <laughs> no, that's not I, I will make sure it's clean. Um, All right. Yeah. All right. So gotta keep changing. Hold on. 
But it needs to say more the special permit it needs to say. Um, Mm -hmm. One thing that it says in the decision. Mm -hmm. that text. All right, so I think one is all set. Um, <coughs> So I'm sorry, Marcus. Two. Well, just two is our standard statement, but it's it's not our not reading the way we usually say it. Permits issued by other boards or agencies of the town of Southwick. And would a, Dave Spina, what were you saying? You sounded like you had something. Like Shelby. I think it should be. Or I think the intent was to have it be considered conditions of approval under the special permit. I think that's right. That's the same thing we put in other ones, right? Yeah, but they just don't, you don't say conditions. that here. Condition, considered of approval. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. I just skipped over that. Yeah. 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 Condition, right? Condition. Mm -hmm. Do you consider it? Again, John, testing you. I'm updating the template as we speak. Perhaps this is the last time we're talking about these. Not be. and other, other boards. Batting the thousand over here, right? Other, other boards. First line. My, my jammer thing's up there. Gotcha. <laughs> Good. Yeah. You're getting your dinner and dessert. <laughs> John, just make sure we're on top of things. Mm. All right, everybody okay with two now? See? Yes. Yep. Oh. Sure. Add that to the boilerplate, John. We will. Your template. We will. Word sniffing is it's important. Not that true. One second. What did we do without word processing? Um, all right. Everybody okay with three A and B? That should be. Should we list the exhibits by number or just exhibits in general? Good answer. Uh, hold on a second. Um, All right, so if that's just the language from the original one, so it's just referring to the exhibits there, that, you know, attached to that. Uh, we can, we can, thank you. But the exhibits adapt to the original decision or the 1983 decision. Yeah, uh, what you're saying was that it's attached to the original. Moving over here. A. So the only additional exhibit specific to this matter uh, is the reuse overlay that um, the applicant produced. First page.
Everybody okay with A? Yeah, mm -hmm. seeing a lot of nods. All right, we should wait. Nodding <laughs> off. <laughs> no, man. Not even not chose not to be more specific. Yeah. Than that. Okay. Um, B and C. These on somebody up there, B. We'll go down to C and D here. So C is saying uh, the company constructing the solar arrays have to conform to these times. These they can't operate on Sundays or during seven, or they can only operate between seven and five. Mm -hmm. Only operate right. on the Sunday. But then after the solar array is completed, they don't have to comply with these times anymore. Which seems reasonable. They're going to operate at 24 7, no, but no operation is above that. Yeah. There's something that's happening. What are we doing now? You're adding? Uh, yeah, I yeah. know. Um, construction activities. So, the solar array shall. One, two, three, four. Does that work? Is I that think that was missing. Is that in the form? decision yeah, that we missing. issued for the the solar array? I don't know. Leave? That's why I don't. I was going to put it in here just because I don't know the answer to that. But um, yeah, there there's a um, there's, a, there's a construction um, schedule with a decision. I would. I would we probably prefer that we, during our construction period, the solar array adheres to that schedule. I have no problem with that. Um, oh, well, operation. Again, I don't know what it is on the top of my head. It's similar to 75, but I think it allows us to. Oh, oh yeah, no, no, side. I'm flipping this around. Hold on. Yeah, I, I would take out I don't, that last normal operation of the second. solar array shall not be subject to these restrictions. Why is that? Because uh, no normal operation of a solar array is 24 7 with nobody touching it. So, why would we tell them that the solar array has to get turned down off at 5 p.m. every night? Yeah, we can't. Definitely. Well, we're both the streets. Just telling you, it's probably okay. Well, it's dark then, anyway. Normal <laughs> operations are it's not wrong. Yeah, no, that's fine. All right. 
Shelby. Yeah, I think the intent when the town council wrote the letter was Shelby. clearly you have to operate outside these hours. And if this blankets the whole property, that that's not going to jive. Yeah, yeah, no, I, yeah, yeah, yeah. I got it. Okay. Turn the light off 501. Light down. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. So did it change? Or did it change? Too, uh, yeah. okay. there. So it didn't change. <laughs> it didn't change. Yeah. All right. Attached here too, or attached? To or uh, attached to the okay. yeah, part of the yeah, yeah. sixteen is not in there. Yes. All right, everybody okay with these condition amendments? Yeah, mm -hmm. all right. Uh, it's four through six. Well, it's the only thing that we can put on. Can you speak? Wait, what do we do? He didn't miss it. Uh, never have a we didn't take before. the name off of this session. So it didn't come into play until I think it did. Yeah. Yeah. So between so, three plus. I think it was the mid 90s. So, yeah. Um, but so we never incorporated it into any other renewals. That's good. Okay. Um, <clears throat> Okay, so here's what I'm going to rely on. John, if you see anything, uh, I'm just going to cut and paste the stuff from the prior one. And we can kind of go through it and see if there's anything we feel like we may want to do. <clears throat> All right. Um, so there's, if there's any specific terms and conditions that need to apply to the earth excavation within the wellhead, we should put them in here. That doesn't necessarily need to be, but we should mm -hmm. at least think about it if we need to do it. This is what we have in the um, solar right permit. Obviously, a bunch of these things are irrelevant to, um, you know, three and four here are completely irrelevant to the earth excavation. Uh, five is, or is it now three is now irrelevant. I assume this last one should be in there. Mm -hmm. Two, I think, was also related to. Correct. Got the, you want the specs of that? Mm -hmm. I mean, I think those two are probably. One seems like a catch all for just general wellhead permits, and um, two seems to be the bylaw uh, one. So uh, I think those are the only ones that are, I don't think there's anything specific to earth excavation that would be needed in the wellhead district. Not for Tilkar. No. Okay. So on um, the item one, Mike, I think is a better or different term besides building permit. That, uh, oh, um, yes, prior to the um,
Sorry to the um, continued the operation. The expression says everything that's on my mind. Was that continued operation? Of the use. That's right. Why don't we say earth excavation use? That one. Yeah. Um, we close, so we're going to that, correct? Yeah. Okay. Yes. Uh, and we had a full board of regular yeah. members, right? Well, actually, have. Yeah. We have to vote on two things. Yep. Special permit and site plan approval. Are we still doing these little electronic things? Yeah, Fantastic. I think it's convenient. Okay. Okay. Like romance perhaps lost. Oh, spelled paper. right. What's that? It's all spelled right. <laughs> you don't even have to be present <laughs> to sign your name. Ah. Uh, it should be a cursive. Who cares if you use the links? Find it down in front of they have a program. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Okay. <clears throat> um, okay. Start off with uh, everybody okay with this decision as it's currently written to vote on. Okay. All right, do I hear a uh, motion to grant the special permit and site plan approval um, subject to the terms and conditions contained in Is the it an amendment? It's an amendment, right? Modification. The special permit on site plan approval that it says amended earth excavation. Hmm. Okay, how about modification? Application to amend it okay. August 8th. Oh, we're going to modify it. I think that's how we typically have. Yeah, yeah. it's kind of right there. It is. That's the deletion of the measure vehicle. Do you want to just type in the applicant name there, or do you want to write it? Um, I was just going to go back and check with the pod just to make sure okay. we have the, yeah. you know, I, I, I'm sure you know it, but I just wanted to. <laughs> That's a better idea. Somebody LLC. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Okay, so um, do I hear a motion to grant modification to the special permanent site plan approval subject to the terms and conditions contained in this written decision uh, for Placebos? Hudson Drive. Up for Hudson Drive. <laughs> but it took on property at Hudson Drive. Marcus Phelps, so do I hear a second? 
Richard Singer, second. Your roll call vote. Mike Dory, aye. Marcus Phelps, aye. Richard Singer, aye. David Sutton, aye. Dave Spina, aye. All right. Do I hear a motion to grant a wellhead protection district permit subject to the terms and conditions contained in this written decision for uh, to have property at Hudson Park? Marcus Phelps, so moved. Richard Singer, second. Your roll call vote. Mike Dory, aye. Marcus Phelps, aye. Richard Singer, aye. David Sutton, aye. Dave Spina, aye. And because I still haven't figured out whether we need to do this or not, do I hear a motion to accept this written decision as um, as we discussed? No. Marcus Phelps. So I have no idea whether we have to do this or not, but oh, well, uh, we'll do it. But we might as well do it until I figure it. Actually, ask the question with someone. Oh. Um, Singer, second. Yeah. We'll do a roll call vote. Michael Doherty, aye. Marcus Phelps, aye. Richard Singer, aye. David Sutton, aye. Dave Spina, aye. Okay, so that is all set. Uh, you'll just pop in the name of the applicant uh, from the solar that is on record, and we'll be good to go. Thank you. Thanks, Tom. Thanks. Thank you. Gosh. So <laughs> far, I think we're going to go too far. Let me say this is the final version. Who's being prepared? Hmm? Who's being prepared? Who's being prepared? Long day. <laughs> Just work every day. Oh, day right? Is it table? Okay. Just can be. What is it can be? What do we got? Okay. Next? So let's save and um, we've got Awesome. Okay. We'll touch it. Thank All you. right. Southwick DPW parking lot design guidelines, LID variant, if these kind of small are coming. You guys John. ready? <laughs> now we're going to spend the next two hours. I thought Fine. those notebooks were for us to review. Randy and I are continuing to work through the, the recommendations. To Pull out what we think works best for Southwick. And so, you call it, man. You I got it. I have to continue. Hang in there. I have to continue. Master Plan Advisory Committee update. <clears throat> Marcus. All right. Here we are. Uh, everybody so should have gotten a copy, black and white copy, of the results of the community survey. And the graphs and pie charts are a little hard to see in black and white, but the main thing to look at is the percentages. So, you know, you can follow along through that. It's a lot of information to digest. Uh, there were, I think, 20 open-ended questions where people could just write in whatever they wanted to. And fortunately, one of our committee members, Nord Cheever, is a data guy and he used something called the Pareto method Pareto. Pareto method along with Mr. Spina and uh Randy Brown to work on those uh question answers that people submitted or information people submitted on those questions so that's yet to be added to this report the report is done by Heiner Valley Planning Commission and it's hard to summarize it all, but in 25 words or less, <laughs> respondents want to sustain Southwick's cultural and rural character. Surprise, surprise. Mm -hmm. They want to encourage single family housing and business development, discourage apartments, uh, which you know could be a challenge to get affordable living spaces for people, but not, not unusual. One thing that was interesting was a quarter of the respondents work from home. So of the, 
people that responded to the survey, many of whom were up in the age brackets, <laughs> but people are working from home. And there is very strong support for agricultural use in the town. So the Agricultural Committee, I'm sure, will uh, hook onto that one. And I think the challenge in the coming years is what types of crops will be useful to grow. And, you know, we have certain areas in the town that are covered with open fields that people would like to see continue producing some kind of crop. So anyway, there's more to come. We had uh, the in-person community workshops, which we don't have a summary report on yet. And the next phase is uh, specific work groups. It's very small, more technical people uh, on these uh, committee or these work groups. And uh, the advisory committee at their last meeting discussed who should be on that for the various uh, parts of the report, the, uh, the uh, master plan. So that's yet to come. That'll happen in December and January. And then we'll work our way into the spring and we'll see how it comes out. But we will eventually, probably in the early spring, give a formal report to the committee here. So I may have to dedicate a meeting or half of a meeting where the uh, Pioneer Valley Planning guy would come and Mr. Goddard will hold forth with, this is what we want to do, or people think we should do. And then we also have funds in phase two for implementation, which will be the you know where the rubber meets the road as to what types of new zoning bylaws we might want or what are some of the groups i mean randy's brown has already picked up on some of the information that's come out of the survey uh so people are using it for some of their discussions already and there's already things in the works of course over the years that have been happening uh in the planning phases that are moving into this. One of which is the short-term rentals or whatever you call it, short-term, yeah. Short-term rentals, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So, you know, there's a few other things going on, but hopefully we'll get the master plan presented to the planning board, which is the authority that uh, votes on it. All right, yeah. Thank you for that segue. That's it. Oh, yeah. oh, short term. <laughs> yeah, there you are. I'm assuming that Randy Brown passed off. Oh, man. Somebody. He's got to make up a short term rental. Don't, don't, don't you want to be the product of your work? I never saw it. You'll be surprised. You'll be surprised. You're not allowed to lose today until you finish reading them. <laughs> Uh, Thanks. Um, so, Dick, this is to be reviewed, and then we can talk about it at the next meeting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think so. I mean, we had like twelve meetings, and it went pretty well. A good couple of votes came out even on both sides of the vote. So that didn't help any. One of the uh, concerns a lot of people had is the enforcement on this. Now, our enforcement officer is obviously the boom inspector, but he says he doesn't want to know about it. He says he's too busy, can't handle it. So how do we do that? And to be honest with you, I can't vote a yes for this. We don't have somebody that's going to enforce it. Already the police say some of it is not their problem. Some is just a personal thing. There's no violations. Can't, if you don't have any bylaws, you can't have any violations. In fact, the town subsidizes this short-term rental, the town itself, which, you know, but there's no bylaws saying you can't have it. And in real life, probably most of the problems are down by the lakes, you know, short-term rentals. They're saying people come up for the weekend. So younger people come up on a Friday night, go to Riverside Park, party, have a bonfire. And a lot of people are complaining about issues like that. I don't think it's a whole lot of them in town, but there's enough that people are concerned. But there again, if we don't have any enforcement, all the pilots aren't going to do us any good. And how we get that done, I don't know. All right. Well, everybody take a look at this and we'll. 
So there is a Except draft. It. There is a draft. Yep, draft bylaw. Draft bylaw by attached. So that's, that's good. Let's uh, take a look at it and then we can discuss it. The next meeting. Uh, LaCroix Drive and Cody Way can be cut off, correct? That's correct. Yep. Just there the place over. And then minutes for approval. Everybody take a look at the November 1st minutes. Mm -hmm. yeah, and I hear a motion to accept them. Marcus Phelps moves to approve the minutes of November 1st, 2022. Right here, second. Richard Singer, second. We'll call vote. Michael Billy, aye. Marcus Phelps, aye. Richard Singer, aye. David Sutton. David Sutton, aye. Just before. Okay. Mr. Sutton. Mm -hmm. Motion to close the meeting. Okay, a second. Page being a second. All those in favor. Aye. Aye. Okay.